you know there's a lot of buzzword nowadays we have okay uh, i want to implement soc or i want to build soc in the organization so as an architect okay how do how do i see you know if i if if i got a task example i want to build soc in the organization so do we follow there's any process document or do we have any steps that we need to consider when you're building a soc Hi team, welcome to the session on Coffee with Prab. And today we have a special guest, Mr. Ajay Srinivas Murthy. Ajay basically having a twelve year of experience in in security architects and uh, core into the SOC and enterprise security. And today in this particular session, uh, we're going to share. We, we're going to get get the new insight on security architects and overall oversight of the SOC from the integration perspective. And I'm sure. this session will be useful for the aspirants uh, those aspirants who want to um uh, want to know the visibility about how the soc architect works and all that what is the importance of security architect in the soc hi ajay good afternoon and good evening good good evening good afternoon yeah so uh, before we going to start the session i want to share brief or oh, most important thing about ajay is ajay is currently reside in ua and uh, he involved in lot of projects so uh we'll definitely see you know his insights and his wisdom in this particular session and we'll tr- i will try to extract more and more information from him so which can be a great value for the people who are watching this video so uh, ajay like can you just share your journey before we basically start a session ajay and thank you so much for taking i know it's a weekday and uh, uh, rushing back to the home and taking the session is not a easy thing ajay thank you so much for you know giving back to the community yeah it's my pleasure prab uh, to evolve the community and to uh, you know uh, to exchange the information in with the community and uh, to give my journey to speak about my journey i started as an l1 and soc uh, way okay. back in yeah uh, way back in early 2010s i would say mm-hmm. and uh, i started working as an l1 uh, where my day to day involved more about security operations mm-hmm. uh, you know sit and monitor multiple screens for any <laughs> threats you yeah. know good old days where uh, where we had uh, Giants like Arcsight, Curadar. Curadar is still yeah. a giant, but yeah. but at that time, uh, Arcsight and there was there used to be a solution, uh, same solution called RSA Envision, which used mm-hmm. to be one of the major player during that time. So we mm-hmm. started the journey from there, and uh, then I've moved into you know uh, managing a complete Qualis Guard vulnerability management solution end to end. The okay. assets. of that enterprise uh, it, it was through a capgemini itself however mm-hmm. the client which we had it was having somewhere on 35000 servers spread across the globe so managing that set of vulnerabilities prioritizing impacts is you know how much uh, i would say that insights you might get or knowledge you might get and what are the prioritizations and how do you manage is one of the key items which i took out of it and then i joined aujas in all just i've uh, i was more of an implementation mm-hmm. i would say that uh, implement uh, implementation work where uh, i you know uh, implement the soc solution go to a so- customer place uh, connect you know uh, there was one uh, customer uh, there are a couple of customers where we did not have internet as well in the soc room okay. or I, in the implementation side because those are government agencies as you know uh so we used to burn the cds and uh, we used to burn the cds and take the <laughs> it 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 used to get scanned before we enter the premises and then we uh insert the cd in the system so that it can uh, usbs were not allowed as well so through cds we used to install the updates or install the sim solution or if you want to connect with a support team we cannot connect directly so we need to collect the logs burn the cd back again and then come out and then share it with the customer support for any issues so that was more... yeah go ahead go ahead go ahead yeah and then i've moved to a bank called national bank of abu dhabi in uh, uae so there i was mainly into vulnerability management and soc operations same like the previous uh, this one so there i learned especially on the financial sector there were a lot of attacks at that point of time there were uh, you know a major attacks and at the same time we have we heard about uh, attacks like shamoon or 
or oh. multiple bla- uh, ransomware so i you know uh, directly it was not impacted however i saw how the attack life cycle or i would say that how the attack might happen i have witnessed in the front end so yeah i would say that that was one of the great insights uh, which gave it to me and then i moved to a, a sap where mm-hmm. uh, uh, sap bangalore where i was a part of detection and response as well as a red team uh, during you know just before during the attacks i had one of, during the attacks when i was in abu dhabi yeah so at that point of time i got interest in learn how the attackers take consideration so i started to do my oscp to understand what is the attacker's mindset and then what are the steps he would take to compromise a machine hmm. which can utilize in turn for me to uh, you know write a better detections okay yeah and then uh, in sap i was managing bo- uh, i mean i was in a part of both blue team and red team at that time purple mm. team was not there so we had a, a team called secops team where blue team and red team sit used to sit together we used to cha- challenge each other in terms of you know how the implement has, uh, has to be done we used to test ourselves and we built multiple uh, sim solutions internally uh, where we were able to identify catch the attackers even at the encryption level where the encryption is being evaded so that uh, that gave me a very good knowledge about you know a direct performing red team as well as performing at the blue team at the same time that's great so yeah. uh, um continuation to this question only because it it motivated yeah. me to drive one question so you know there is a lot of buzzword nowadays we have okay um i want to implement soc or i want to build soc in the organization so as an architect okay mm. um how do how do i see you know if i if if i got a task example i want to build soc in the organization so do we follow there's any process document or do we have any steps that we need to consider when you building a soc as an architect yes. perspective yeah, yeah is it possible for you to quickly drive through that process so it can be very useful sure uh, from an architecture perspective first thing is need we need to identify what are the data we are going to ingest what are the uh, uh, you know devices or data what kind of visibility are we getting into it and then we need to mean uh, from an architecture perspective or when designing the solution perspective we need to identify how the uh, you know uh, what kind of data we are ingesting and how much of the data we might be ingesting Excellent. like even per second or data uh, you know uh, how much storage of data we are going through and is uh, to handle the data do we have enough capacity planning uh, let's say for example whether we need to allocate 16 gb of ram 20 gb of ram 64 gb of ram 128 gb of ram so that from that level and then mm. you need to place your sensors so to understand uh, from a soc architecture perspective we need to pl- the placement of the sensors and then you call it as collectors so those comes into the considerations before we build any uh, soc and then okay. you need to also understand how many uh, analysts are ma- ma- just a guess so that you can uh, you know build the user interface or tailor ma- uh, customize the user interface of it okay so you mean to say that you know um... so what i understood from your uh, uh, perspective of the you know architect is basically we focus on quality over the quantity we focus on on the 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 requirement which is more relevant to the business function instead of collecting all the data right yeah correct yeah, yeah. So, so first thing is uh, business critical data must always be integrated with uh, crown jewels as we mentioned right crown mm-hmm. jewels must also uh, we need to take care of the crown jewels at the first so those are our first priorities mm-hmm. Ajay, is it possible? Can you drive through any case study and explain that? I'm not talking about a real case study like Gavin, but taking the references and uh, is it possible? Like, if you're working for a um, suppose financial sector, and as an architect, yeah. you know you want to you got a task that okay, you want to design the SOC for the organization. So, so yeah. what is the end to end flow? I'm sorry, uh, it's it's just like okay. you know on this online session, uh, online session or this online session is just like a gunpoint for you. This guy is basically okay. asking okay. the very rapid fire question. So this is a okay. question which is normally I have seen received by peoples and all that. So how how to start from basics? Yeah. So to start from basics, uh, we need to understand the crown jewels of the of that financial sector. Let's say it's hmm. a bank. So hmm. bank might have websites. 
Hmm. And internally, it might have multiple children websites or okay. child websites, child sites. And then you might have mobile application, multiple mobile hmm. application. Maybe it's for a loan application separately. <clears throat> and, you know, however, the first thing we want to concentrate on the mobile application as well as on uh, web application. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we need to understand whether they are in hybrid mode, whether they are in the cloud as well as on-prem or whether they are only based out of on-prem. So, mm -hmm. and we need to understand the data regulations for that particular bank based on the uh, geographical location. Let's say, for example, if it's an hybrid, a hybrid bank, we can go for SaaS-based uh, SIM solutions like Sentinel or Securonix. Whereas if you want to go, uh, or even you can go with Splunk, you know, it depends uh, what kind of choose, uh, it, it depends upon what is the end goal of it. And then if you want to just limit yourself to on-prem, we have multiple solutions like QRadar, Splunk, and various other solutions. So based on this design, let's say, let's think about a scenario where all the banks or the financial sector are going towards the hybrid now. So we would preferably go for cloud native, uh, applications where you can collect let's say for example uh, you have uh, you can integrate with cash base you can, mm -hmm. yeah you can integrate with cash base you can integrate or collect all the web application logs or uh, as well as you can collect the ddos solution logs where you can uh, see you have a ddos solution in place however yeah. ddos will do its job but yeah. you need to analyze the traffic which you receive at the perimeter level and then you need to build some rules based on your baselines you know and you need to create a dashboards in your socks environment where you monitor the baselines if any blips and hips on mm. uh, from the ddos perspective then you you mainly concentrate on uh, you know any tampering of mobile applications yeah and uh, if any tampering of web applications using web applications logs or from WAF logs so these are the major uh, major ma uh, you know major considerations which i will take in the con uh, which we would be considered okay so this is basically the stage 2 where you are considering the uh, sensors input devices and all that then next stage is next stage is, is once you ingest the logs you have something called as uh, there are three main characteristics of sock or i, I would say sim one is uh, correlation, aggregation, and data, uh, how much ever data you want, you can aggregate. And then you need mm. to normalize the data mm. so that everyone can understand, even the end user who is monitoring, as in, I would say that, uh, you know, uh, SOC analysts, even by looking at the logs, they must be able to identify what is what, what is law, what, what kind of log is this, so that you, he, he or SOC analyst or a detection engineer, engineer can write security detections over it. Okay. Okay. So this is the step three, I would say, where you create basic set of rules, hmm. which are predefined from a SOC uh, from any of the SIM solution. And okay. the next step used to customize your detections. Okay. This is very important because the tailor made, uh, uh, I would say that the predefined rules might generate a lot of false positives. So the false positive ratio might go even beyond, you know, on an average uh, security operation center, the false positive ra rates are uh, way beyond 60 to 70 percentage. Oh, okay. This is the, and it would be difficult in such scenario to find a needle in a head. True. So that's where you need to tailor made your customer detections and you need to maintain the fidelity of, you need to maintain track uh, fidelity of each and every detections which you implement in SOC or SIM, SIM solution mm -hmm. and measure those against the fidelity quarterly or monthly, weekly. So it's up to the team where uh, you can measure those. And then you have automated responses. After that, once you have a detections in place, you need to take a response. Let's say an alert triggered. I need to take a response. So you have a, a traditional way of, you know, sending the alert opening a ticket in a, you know, a ticketing solution and then mm. assign it to someone with basic investigations. Mm. Instead of that, since the, uh, you know, uh, emerging technologies as well as emerging threats and attacks, it is very mm. fast and very rapid. So the process of, you know, uh, remediation also must be very fast. So we need to rely on automation solutions, source solutions where you mm. define playbooks, and then you take necessary actions 
at the even with the consent of you know the respectable stakeholders you can okay. create war war uh, you know uh, i would say that uh, you know uh, war rooms especially oh. in uh, all the source solutions you have war rooms and even source solutions now has the capability to integrate with slack zoom and uh, oh. you know uh, collaborative uh, channels where oh. it can act as a chatbot and then take necessary action automotive action i would say and and so and the, uh, uh, you, you you talk about this uh, uh, you know uh, false positive and all that so ajay what is your view on managing a false positive if i want so the biggest concern for us is to increase a false negative and false negative. another biggest concern is basically false positive so so uh, we need to increase false true positives hmm, okay yeah. and then we need to reduce false positives yeah so it is always a buzzword you know how to balance this so i'm sorry i'm going a bit out of the slavers but uh, uh, i just want yeah. to understand you know as an architect how you handle mm-hmm. this particular challenge of managing this balancing the true positive false positive and false negative yeah so one thing is you know when you approach any use case or a detection mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, you need to understand you need to stick to the context of that exact uh, specific detection so hmm. what we go is that let's say when we speak about port scanning i'll take an example of port scanning so hmm. if you speak about port scanning you might get you no know, port scanning alert like more than 20 30 in one hour true okay for a hmm. medium to small size enterprise hmm. so hmm. it would be difficult for an analyst to analyze each and every one of them so true. what we need uh, giving that scenario uh, you need to understand how a successful port scan might work yeah okay so we need to consider like let's say for example we need to consider where if all the ports are blocked already i mean if the port scanning is not successful all the we did not see any allowed traffic then we can mm. consider that no need to take further actions if we get a recursive of uh, port scan from the same ip address then we can consider to take some remediation action so mm. however at that point of time we can consider if we say if we see any allowed traffic let's say mm. on unusual ports then mm. only we take port scanning seriously and then try to uh, remediate the true you know uh, ip address or whatever it is yeah so okay. we need to think one step beyond on the use case and mm. then implement the detections so you mean to say that the moral of the, the most important part uh, in this entire part is basically uh, creating a rules and uh, uh, yeah creating a rules and so, analytics and all that yeah yeah its main important part is to maintain the fidelity so okay this is fidelity is the buzzword in hmm. security operations even when you speak about mitre attack framework everywhere they might be using fidelity as the highest state of detections so so you need to increase the fidelity and once you start increasing the fidelity once constant great on increasing the fidelity detections the false positive ratio will go down it's okay. a di- uh, in uh, direct proportionality with it okay so uh, so those are directly proportional to each other and when hmm. we consider about detections yeah hmm. so we need to align ourselves to understand where are we at the detections so okay. for this we can uh, make leverage of mitre attack framework hmm. where your detections are mapped along with your mitre attack framework where you can see what techniques are being captured at our point of time excellent yeah? what are the sub techniques are being we are able to detect what are the uh, and you need to plan in ac- accordingly in such a way that we can improve our detections step by steps probably you know two or three detections or two or three techniques per month because I, why i ask this question is because in a lot of interviews uh you know yeah. they ask this question you know how to improve the false positive and false negative i think those who are watching this video this is a very important part make sure you make a pointer of that and very useful for me i got two new insight in this actually i was not aware about from that integration but thanks ajay sharing your wisdom in that particular area i really impressed and then uh, we can uh, uh, when uh, we are going with mitre attack framework right yeah so uh, we need to there are close to 196 techniques uh, 196 techniques so mm-hmm. we cannot cater those many use cases or detections in place from mm-hmm. a same standpoint we need to try 
and leverage uh, existing detections where we can cover multiple uh, techniques or even can you give, can, 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 you, can, can, you, can you share some example on this area if it's possible to explain with some attack re reference yeah uh, we can take about uh, recently uh, in some time back uh, we had multiple uh, ransomware attacks based on citrix i would say mm -hmm. so citrix uh, is more of a citrix ransomware attacks yeah so citrix adc as a vulnerability where mm -hmm. an external uh, attacker can do a remote code execution on Citrix and try to gain access towards the Citrix environment. So okay. in that scenario, what we can do is that, you know, uh, first, uh, the since it's a web uh, public facing uh, application, you can leverage T1190 and you can, T1190 is for public uh, public facing uh, MITRE tactic. Uh, so from there, you can identify that you can in investigate all the traffics which are coming towards the web, maybe at the firewall level, maybe at the web uh, WAF level, or maybe even in the Citrix content, uh, or I would say that, uh, you know, system logs level to understand is there any blips or is there any unusual activity which is being performed, like command injections, you can monitor. You there are, if you go, uh, you know, from a detection perspective we need to understand how the attack is being performed what are the commands are being used so for that we need to go through some of the blocks which might have published uh, especially on how the attack can be performed yeah so okay. as soon as the zero day vulnerability is published there might be multiple theories or multiple attack vectors which comes into the picture and also many of the github pages will g give birth yeah <laughs> so yeah so it's you more like a cyber threat inter threat intelligence like it's more yeah, like it's a kill more chain like and a all cyber that, yeah. Threat yeah however we go deep into not only on the tactic or technique mm. we go deep into how it is being performed at the pattern level understood so you go understand the script uh, of the attack script understand how it is being exploited and then utilize the same to detect you know utilize the same mechanism we have to do the reverse engineering of how the attack is being performed. Try to capture that patterns in your logs. Try to look for look out for the logs and try to attach the patterns. And then you have your detections in place. That's and then great. you can, yeah, then you can customize how you need. Excellent. Because that is something, it's a very good point you have said about, you know, using a blocks references and based on that, discovering the threat. That's a very good point. That's really a great point. So, that is what, uh, you know, when you're talking about improving the things and all that. So once you have this analysis, correlations and all that, as an architect, yeah. you know, so what is the next step after that? So once you have that, you need to do, a, uh, you know, you need to monitor your SIM health as well. That is where uh, SIM health as well as you need to monitor whether we have the visibility from all the critical devices. You need to keep on monitoring on a day-to-day -day basis. It's, it's it, from an architect I can design and go, but hmm. second step, it needs to be continuously audited, monitored, and then hmm. you need to make sure that, you know, everything is in place so that the security system or SOC system must work efficiently. So when you de design your SIM solution, you need to think about the scalability as well, how you can, uh, you know, how you can expand even when, uh, the number of mm -hmm. locks might just or we can get new technologies can be integrated to sim mm -hmm. solution so from an architect yeah scalability is one of the main part and availability excellent so uh, you talk about when sim health and all what is that health sim health can you just share some insight on that area yeah uh, so we take about two uh, sets of health one is on the sim solution health itself let's say for example uh, if the RAM uh, usage is high if the network bandwidth reaching towards, you mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, SIM solution is high or IOPS <clears> in the uh, SIM solution is high, it might go down, which might affect the availability perspective. If SIM goes down, it means that we lack visibility across multiple platforms in a single pin. So even if there is an attack, we will not be able to identify unless and until we correlate it in the SIM solution. Okay. And, and how important we, is that? It's very, 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 very important. Because and every company follow that? Actually, I have uh, I have seen some companies where they where they seriously follow it. To be honest, okay. I have seen companies where they do not follow it. They for the sake that, of SOP. Uh, yeah. For the sake of SOP. 
for the sake of sop they just raise mm-hmm. a ticket and then they'll keep quiet so i have seen both sets of you know uh, companies where they take it seriously uh, especially in middle east they take it very seriously i would say uh, in this perspective so you have multiple mechanisms in place because you're governed by sla any time yeah. you would be asked for locks and you have a very written uh, you know in the written clauses it is very evident that 99.9% of the data availability must be present in sim wow so Great these are the yeah. yeah these are the you know during your sls these are the uh, terms will be taken into considerations or even in the uh, scope of work as well okay so the, the important point here is okay you're talking about monitoring health and all that after the what is the next step like do we have any anything else apart from that or that's it yeah, like, finish need... it off no no soft soft never finishes it's a continuous program <laughs> yeah so then uh, you need to have uh, then we speak about response sections right soft sim is not only the solution sim is the tool to detect however yeah. the processes which is lying behind it soft response actions response team how do yeah. you maintain the team that is very important how do you you need to provide 24 cross 7 services yeah you need to okay. plan accordingly and then you need to try to reduce l1 dependency by yeah. uh, automating playbooks so we need to take next step would be uh, once the sim solution is a good phase we need to hmm. take consideration about defining the playbooks writing the playbooks yeah okay and at the uh writing the playbooks uh, ev- for every different kind of attack not just having one or two playbooks we need to have mm. more than 20 to 30 different kind of playbooks so that we can take necessary actions oh okay and at the last you have your runbooks runbooks or sops which are very very necessary where let's say for example a new uh, new join new, new person join the team and he, he doesn't know what to do or he might be a fresher so runbooks are the place where it teaches what are the actions we need to take whom do we need to notify and how to take the necessary actions for that particular event or do we mm. need to involve any regulatory authorities so all that will be captured in the runbooks okay that's and great. yeah so this runbooks needs to be updated regularly based on when the detection is modified or updated okay so you yeah. must go hand in hand okay so i uh, you know we have seen lot of confusion regarding this uh, run book and rule book whatever so any thin line difference to explain with the any example run book run book or a rule book sorry rule book yeah a, a run book or a playbook i would say yeah you can say yeah, run, run, run book and run. playbook yeah yeah okay so run books are an advanced versions of sops what needs hmm. to be done hmm. however playbooks are the one which takes actions on this run books okay example so run book example let's say for example uh, my one of the machine got compromised okay uh, one of the machine got compromised we need to isolate mm. uh, in the res- response it will say that once the alert is triggered identify what the user was doing or well, identify whether any user downloaded any malicious uh, link or he clicked any malicious link or he downloaded any malicious software once mm. where the execution happened whether it's a ransomware all those things will come into the run book however okay. in the play you need to isolate the machine so in the run book it says isolation however to make that action you need to take a playbook into the consideration you need uh, you will it will mention how to uh, you know automatically how to isolate this, this device and contain the attack okay. so runbook is more of a statements playbook is more of an action which needs to be considered understood and, and it need to be updated on regular basis yeah and playbooks are usually automated you know uh, using uh, your sore solution excellent that's why nowadays we have a sore as a buzzword yeah sore actually is a buzzword i would say so it makes Uh, you know when i have seen where things are going wonderful where the attacks gets uh, identified in sim solution and within a uh, you know a very short period of time the attack is getting remediated contained and incident response incident reports also been created hmm. so play uh, so is 
actually a buzzword unless and until it is configured properly and made usage of the playbooks. And that is, see, that's why, you know, nowadays a lot of companies shifting to SOAR and all that because they want to reduce at least 30 to 40% of the effort of the SOC team. So yeah. that can be done. So how how architect see SOAR or how the architect see the SOAR as a solution in the company? Uh, SOAR as a solution, it not only it is, not uh, see, when you're going with a SOAR solution, we can think about not only it is doing from a security standpoint of perspective, mm -hmm. Hmm. It is an uh, it gives you hundred percent ROI, hmm. I would say, on your hmm. reducing reducing the efforts, I would say, and reducing the burden on SOC analysts as well as hmm. it can also do, which is uh, apart from security uh, security automation as well. You can utilize that platform to automate your day to day job as well. Understood. You have okay. multiple integrations. You know, you have multiple integrations. You have war rooms you have mm. chat box so mm. from an uh if you think from a management perspective it's like an add-on which can reduce my overhead understood and and you know if i if i ask you as a ajay as an architect what is the best or what is the best practice to optimize the SOC as maximum so that we can so, able to reduce the attacks maximum as attacks, a good can best be reduced, yeah. <laughs> attacks can never be reduced. It's exactly. more about uh, how we are efficient, able to detect. So, exactly. Sorry, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, from a best practice <clears throat> perspective, uh, increase, uh, I mean, uh, utilize more high fidelity use cases or detections in your SIM platforms and mm. try to reduce the noise, which is very, very important. So we have seen in SOC, uh, in SIM solutions, right? We have seen uh, per day more than 15,000 alerts getting triggered in an MSS, in a large scale MSS uh, where it is multi geographical. Yeah. 15,000 yeah. alerts and you might have 100 people in place. So if you divide and conquer, you will have the, you know, you will still have uh, residue. We can consider this as residual risk. Yeah will not be addressed or it, it might take down to the next shift or next person still, you know, it will remain residual as well. So no. the first uh, is high fidelity and then you need to uh, optimize your detections as specific to the context, to the use case as possible. And then make sure your run books are updated regularly and followed even when, uh, uh, you know, most of the times, as a, you know, uh, I would say that uh, most of the times as a taboo, no one will try to follow uh, run books. They think that they will know everything. That's the perceptual, con uh, you know, perception. Yeah. However, system, if, if, system, if you network. receive a ticket, the system is hacked, remove the system from the network instead of confirm and verify. Yes, correct. Uh, validation is what is required. You need to go one step ahead, investigate. Okay. Consider two, three points, validate yourself, think, yeah. question yourself. That is the main thing. Question yourself. If you're in this situation, let's say if your laptop is itself is in that situation, do you take that action? Hmm. No. You put yourself in the shoe. Then Yeah, you see, definitely take... it's it's all about the situation. See, yeah. there's no patch for human stupidity. Even I do mistake. Yeah, yeah everyone does mistake. Yeah. 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 So for that, you need to have awareness. Yeah. So oh. you need to have awareness. <clears throat> And uh, this is another buzzword is there, you know, uh, something called as wargaming. Exactly. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. So you need to do computations like how red team used to have CTFs, right? Now the concept from a blue team perspective is wargaming where you would be, someone would be performing an attack. You try to detect the attacks as early as possible. And you, there are multiple concepts from, a, I would say that from a security standpoint of view, from an incidence response standpoint of view, we have something called as diamond model. So oh, you need to yeah. think about what is the adversary, what is the infrastructure, map it, okay? In a short span of time, you must be in, uh, you know, uh, in a flash, you must be fast enough that you can map this. Once you map this, your answer will be in front of you. Okay. And do you have any platform for this war gaming? Because those who are watching this video and they want to yeah, practice have, war gaming. Uh, yeah, one of the good suggestions i would say for a war gaming is that immersive labs has very good uh war gaming oh. and cyber reason also has a very good war gaming platform 
immersive labs i would rate higher because you know uh, you can customize your uh, scenarios okay however if if you want to use a plug and play cyber reason hmm. as pre built scenarios for war games Understood. so you can utilize it team do let me know in the comment box shall i disturb ajay for a next topic of next season on war gaming and diamond model okay in the comment box so in that in a gun point i can tell him right now it's a live session so <laughs> yeah. live session is like gun point yeah so i'm sure uh, ajay will be comfortable to have one more session with us on on sure, diamond sure, model yeah. and war gaming yeah yeah i'll be happy to great okay so we're talking about the war gaming and diamond model that we can use to improve and apart from that anything else apart you would from, like to suggest yeah apart from that continuous monitoring of your sim health <clears throat> okay uh, so, yeah continuous monitoring of your sim health and one part which we miss is that you know continuous integration with threat intelligence oh okay yeah that's true it's important yeah part. yeah so the threat intelligence data must be vetted and it has to be in such a situation that we get the right data so we would need a dedication threat intelligence team which can uh, tag what kind of alert is it and uh, what kind of intelligence it is being received and then forward it to sim solutions you need to utilize uh, tip platforms and most of the sim solutions now supports sticks taxis as well as you know uh, direct integration vpi level integrations with threat intelligence platforms that's great and and uh, as an architect you know if i want to become an architect uh mm-hmm. as a soc architect so what is a skill is basically required because y- you sharing your experience that come from experience and all that but but so, as an as a security arch- as a security architect for soc what is a necessary skill is required how to become this this architect yeah, yeah. so first you need to understand you know start from uh, i would say that you need to go with the soc level uh, soc True. understanding blue team uh, blue team understandings and mm-hmm. then you can take a vendor specific certifications let's say if you want to become a splunk f- mm-hmm. architect you can first be you need to be a solution architect before becoming a design architect yeah okay so so you need to understand how the solutions work take a pick any of the solutions become an architect in that solution let's say a splunk architect or you have a sentinel as a part of a microsoft architect cyber security architect se 100 or you can even have architecture in ibm uh, curator so hmm. once you have that into the picture then uh, from a certification standpoint then you can think about at the enterprise level architecture okay. but it is mandatory for to have a certification or we can have a just no, no, no. it's not to mandatory to have a certification but the mm-hmm. level of knowledge okay so ah, uh, to validate the knowledge you you have to go for the exam otherwise based on the knowledge what you obtain based on that you can crack interview and you can get a job mm-hmm. but only yeah. thing is that to validate the knowledge you should go for the exam to validate yourself to question yourself hmm. see, see uh, there are there are places where uh, security uh, certifications does not matter yeah knowledge matters so however to validate it for yourself whether you have enough knowledge certifications are the pathway i agree and 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 what are the other things is basically required to become the architect apart from certification yeah, is we, there splunk is there yeah certification is that you need uh, we need to think the mindset we need to hmm. change the mindset from an architect perspective yeah hmm. so you need to uh, look from a top from top down you approach can say from a, a top top down approach and they need to understand how things are being managed at the lower end how it can be managed better at the higher end and, and and for that you know i can give an example like so example what is the best solution is not xxx product the best solution is the one which meet your business requirement exactly <laughs> yeah and uh, how how it easily caters our requirements exactly and i believe as an architect you need to have very good visibility about what is happening in the organization because visibility is a foundation for an architect visibility yeah agree and you need to be always when you're <clears throat> from an architecture perspective you need to always align with your uh, you know business risks hmm, for agree. anything you think first thing you need to think about your business risk and you need to think about the concepts so uh, as the main six layers of architecture right we speak about strategy and planning and then con- contextual layer and then conceptual layer logical mm. layer mm. operational layer, component layer physical layer yeah so all these six things we need to take into considerations whenever we developing the architecture excellent and uh, 
what is the worst nightmare for an architect we're talking about so many thing about good thing and so as an architect yeah. what is a nightmare for him nightmare because is grass but... is always green on other side so that's my thought yeah 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 so architect life is not so easy i would say yeah but he has always... to design no that's it he has to design you know he just yeah, even design from the... a design perspective you need to think about you know uh, you need to think about multiple landscapes yeah okay. how the organization what is the what are the crown jewels most of the times company will not know what are their crown jewels mm. so you need mm. to get the visibility of it getting the mm. visibility uh, is the biggest part mm. yeah i can simply go to google and type how to prepare the crown jewel document for sop that can be done right no it's not about <laughs> sop getting the visibility right so you need to speak to the people you need to uh, conduct workshops to understand what are they doing and how mm. they are you know it's all about collaborative work architecture okay. is mainly about collaborative work and leadership you, quality must have yeah where you interact with multiple set of people and, and apart from that any other nightmare uh, collaboration is definitely leadership is definitely taking them on the yeah. same agreement yeah so uh, when it comes to architecture nightmare would be to uh, being a bridge between the top management and the middle media, medium uh, middle most management important. or in the most important so yeah. you are always in a juggling between these two so management will say something and your middle management will say some other things so you need to balance it out that mm, would be that's true. Nightmare. yeah and any new applications or integrations Mm. which will come into picture and you have to architect in such a way that uh, you know uh, you build and you need to think about when let's think our architecture as a building architecture once yeah let's put our uh, put ourselves in that shoes okay Agreed. we need once we start to build we need to build a blueprint to understand mm. yeah so blueprints are very much necessary for creating any architecture solutions so Agreed. blueprints and once the blueprints are there you need to start building based on the blueprints and then you customize it the architecture level and then you need to develop in such a way that it must be feel good look right. good yeah yeah and it must be ingested from everyone and adapted okay. from anyone and that is the most important thing you know how you manage yeah. and all that that's the most important part yeah so so the last very important part here is you know what is the last thing you want to suggest all the viewers who are watching this video you know what is your take how do you see soc ah huh? how do you see soc in next 10 year so soc will never vanish away, i would say because soc is ever evolving ever changing and it goes on and on it's like your blood flowing into your system yeah it will never die so soc is perennial i would say because hmm. you need to monitor for threats one or the other way you even you might have you know ai being integrated with to your uh, machine learning languages models being in integrated to your same end of the day the soc will remain as is in terms of operations perspective mm -hmm. yeah so there might be some playbooks which might be automated mm -hmm. but at the l3 level l2 level we still need soc need uh, function which really uh, which relies on your human dependency okay and and and, and uh... yeah go ahead sorry go ahead yeah and uh, from a soc perspective right you need to uh, even the analyst must update regularly so everything the first thing is you need to read news every day to understand hmm. what are the vulnerabilities yeah to understand you have multiple applications mobile applications as well specifically designed for cyber security news you can think about scene intelligence where uh, there are multiple applications where oh. uh, you need to read about it that's how you mm. embed the culture of security then only you will be able to evolve and and sajay like nowadays you know people are moving to the cloud also right so yeah. how do you see the uh, cloud in a soc environment or soc in a cloud sorry soc in a cloud environment which is down so, the new uh, concept yeah yeah soc in the cloud like we have a saas based soc solution however mm. integrate cloud as well okay hmm. so uh, we have two different approaches yeah okay. so one is with respect to integration of soc hmm. integration of clouds into soc yeah hmm. so you have less visibility because everything is managed by your third party provider or your cloud service provider yeah so if it's 
uh, infrastructure as a service, you will have very less uh, limited and you need to make sure that you get complete visibility using your, uh, you know, like uh, from uh, Azure perspective, you can make use of your uh, Azure event hubs and to collect logs, or you can utilize the native solutions like, uh, I would say, uh, Sentinel, or you can say about Securonix, where they come up with, you know, uh, you need to just maintain your, uh, I would say, look and feel about it. The hmm. platform is being managed by the service provider. Yep, that's true. And and you can also, these days, the buzzword is that you can always, from the next-gen SOC perspective, hmm. next-gen SIM perspective, your UEBA is natively integrated with your, uh, you know, uh, UBA solutions are natively natively integrated with your uh, SIM solutions, and now AI coming into the picture, like something like Security Copilot, Microsoft Security Copilot, which can directly add into your uh, uh, Sentinel and gives predictions, decisions for yeah. you. Yeah, that would be game changing as well. And that and that is what I've seen. Again, a lot of companies are moving things on cloud, and they're deciding what kind of a data they have, and according to that, they are basically you know taking the content. So that's why I asked this question. And, yeah, and, and what is we it? Yeah. yeah, we need to think is it into the considerations about, you know, the visibility <clears throat> and so the local data regulations law. Okay. Whether what kind of data we can collect. Yeah. Hmm. Whether uh, data is masked or data is unmasked. So that also while well, integration, integrating, that also comes into the picture. And 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 what is the unit of economics if we go for the on-prem cloud and off-prem cloud? Because nowadays I've seen a lot of people working on the unit of economic of on-prem and off-prem. So how do you see that unit of economics there? I would say unit of economics in that scenario, I would say that more than on-prem, managed services or off-prem would be efficient for an organization to, you know, uh, to make sure that, you know, all the uh, security operations will be managed by someone and then you can take only the decision level uh, security. Okay. And do you see that, okay, tomorrow uh, more of people are moving to the cloud and future will be the cloud only of SOC or? I would not say. You, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, I would not say that. You can still be in a hybrid mode where you can collect the logs from cloud, okay? Yeah. Uh, However, it depends upon the scalability as well. If okay. the particular entity wants to has a plan to expand hmm. immensely to the cloud, then we would suggest go for the cloud native solutions. If Understood. they want to be uh, not expanding in the cloud, they can have only minimal uh, you know cloud presence. Then we can considering consider you know uh, having an on-prem. But if you are going for a multi-cloud approach, I would suggest. Yeah, multi-cloud or multi-tiered approach, I would suggest to go cloud. That's great. Thanks, thanks, Ajay. Thank you so much for this great insight. And I'm sure, you know, the people who are going to watch this video and all that, it will be loving it. I got seven insight from this particular video, which I'm going to apply on my consulting. Okay. So example, like, you know, talking about the uh, SIM um, monitor of health, mo health monitoring, and then we're talking about integration, then we're talking about unit of economics. And how you build so that that was a takeaway for me from this particular session because i haven't seen much videos which talk about this part and i'm sure it will be the game changer in the industry after seeing these videos by the CISOs and architects and all that but you know we have an architect who work on the process and all that but having a blend of technical plus process oriented we have seen a few and you are one of them and thanks for sharing your wisdom thoughts in this particular session ajay we are glad to Thank have you. that content yeah Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you for the opportunity to speak about my, I mean, to give to the community. Thanks. Thanks. Ajay. And thank you. Can, can I share your LinkedIn profile in the, in a, in a YouTube description box? So, you know, people can sure, reach out yeah. to you if you, that's great. And team do let me know, shall I disturb again, Mr. Ajay on the new topic, which is called diamond model and uh, SOC implementations. And if yes, please type yes in the chat box and comment box. So we'll definitely look for the comments and you know insights and based on that we can plan the next video series with mr ajay thank you for watching this video if you're new to the channel do subscribe to the youtube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos on a similar topic good day bye thanks ajay thank you thank you very much